Hey y'all, Melissa here with you today, and as you can see, I am surrounded by sewing machines. I have my four different machines here, and each of these machines does something different. So today, I'm going to be showing you why I have four different machines and what each of them does. Let's start by naming each of these machines, and I want to be clear that this is not a how-to video. This is just going to be an overview of what each of these machines can do so that you can get an idea about whether there's more than one machine that you might like personally for your sewing. In front of me is my sewing machine. This is my basic sewing machine that if you only choose one machine off the table, this one is the must have. If you're gonna do sewing garments or quilting or home decor, any kind of sewing, this is the machine that you have to have. The rest of these are kind of optional and do some specialized things. So this machine over here, this is an embroidery machine. It does machine embroidery. This machine here is a serger. This is particularly useful for finishing seams and for sewing stretch fabrics. And then over here, I have a cover stitch machine. This machine is good for hemming stretch fabrics and it will also do a chain straight stitch. So let me give you a little intro to what each of these machines does. Let's take a look at what a regular sewing machine will do. So this is a basic straight stitch and a lot of sewing and quilting can be accomplished with this. And if you want to be able to sew knits, this is a zigzag stitch. This stitch will stretch with stretch fabric, so as long as your machine can do this, you can sew stretch fabrics as well as wovens. As you go up in price, not only do you have different varieties of stitches built in, you may have many different buttonholes to choose from and even some decorative stitches. Let's take a look at a serger. Sergers do three main stitches. First of all, they have a knife on them and the knife cuts off the excess fabric and does a really nice overlock stitch over the edge that stretches and is also really good for finishing off seams so that they won't fray. With a few settings adjustments, most sergers will also do a rolled hem. This is a nice tight loop that goes around the edge of the fabric, keeps it from fraying, and also can be decorative. And finally, with some settings adjustments, most sergers can also do something called a flat lock seam. For this, you lock the knife and you don't cut any fabric off. And then once the seam is done, you pull it and the stitches form a flat back and a ladder on one side. This can be used as decorative and it's also a strong stretch stitch. Now let's take a look at the cover stitch machine. Now a cover stitch machine typically uses at least two needles. Some can do three, mine can do three, but I prefer two. And it has a looper instead of a bobbin, kind of like a serger. The top stitching is typically straight, and then the looper on the bottom loops the thread back and forth between the two needles. This means that the stitch is inherently stretchy, and though I'm showing it here on a woven, this is a great stitch for seaming and hemming knit fabrics because it will stretch. In addition, most cover stitches, if you take them down to one needle, will do a chain stitch. And that looks like a straight stitch on the front, but on the back, again, the thread is looped. So it is a stretchy stitch as well that looks like a straight stitch on the right side. You can see, even though I'm using this on a woven, that the loop structure on the back would make this stitch stretchy. There's one more cool thing you can do with a chain stitch, and that is it can be used as a basting stitch because 
If you don't secure your thread ends when you're done stitching it, you can very easily just pull the finishing thread off of the back and it will very easily come apart and unstitch the whole thing. Finally, let's look at what an embroidery machine does. To use the embroidery machine, you're going to need more supplies than just fabric and thread. So the first thing you're going to need is stabilizer. And there's lots of different kinds, and since this is not a how-to video, I'm not going to get into it, but I will say that this is the one that I have gone ahead and applied to this fabric. What stabilizer does is it helps the fabric support the dense number of close together stitches that you're going to be putting in to do an embroidery design. You also need the hoop and your embroidery design size is limited by the size of the hoop that your machine will accommodate. So the biggest hoop it can accommodate, that is the biggest design you can do. You can always go to smaller hoops. You can usually buy accessory hoops. But the biggest hoop, which in my case here is this size, that's the biggest design you can do. Once you have your fabric hooped, then you set the hoop into the carriage on the machine. Once you have your hoop seated in your machine, then you're going to select your design. You are limited to the designs that your machine comes with or the designs that you can purchase and add to your machine. So mine has a USB port and I can plug in a USB stick with designs that are formatted for this machine and add additional ones. But for this demonstration, we're just gonna be using one of the built-in designs. So I've put the bobbin or the presser foot down and I'm gonna hit start and you'll see that the carriage is gonna move the hoop back and forth to create the design. Now that that is done stitching out, go ahead and remove it. And you can see my little design here. Now I sped that up on the video, but in real time this took about three minutes to stitch out. So we just need to trim off the threads. And then what you would do with this particular kind of stabilizer that I use, this is fuse and tear. So you would go tear the stabilizer off the back of this design. So, that is an example of what an embroidery machine does. Now that you've seen what each of these machines can do, let's talk about shopping. So, a basic sewing machine will take care of the majority of any kind of sewing you want to do. These other three machines are all specialized. And, of course, I did not buy four machines at once all in one shopping trip. I started with a basic sewing machine. The next machine I personally added was an embroidery machine. Then I got a serger. Then the cover stitch is my most recent acquisition. You can buy combinations of some of these machines. So it is possible to find a sewing and embroidery combination. And what that looks like is a sewing machine that usually has an attachment with the carriage and the hoop that slides on when you want to do machine embroidery instead. You can also find combination serger cover stitch machines and it's sort of the same idea where there are some conversions you have to do to the machine to make it work as a cover stitch or make it work as a serger. My personal preference is to have the different machines and just be able to move my chair between machines doing different things instead of having one machine and converting it to do the other function. However, that is, um, the combination machines are less expensive than buying four machines. So like if I just had a sewing and embroidery machine and a serger slash cover stitch, two machines that covered all four of these functions, I probably would have spent less money than I spent on four machines. 
but then the trade-off is that you have to convert them. And the other thing is um, a combination machine is more expensive than a single machine. So if you're acquiring over years like I am, each purchase was less, like getting just a sewing machine is cheaper than a sewing embroidery combination. So there are trade-offs that depend on your personal preferences and your finances, and those are all things to take into account when you are machine shopping. One final question I often get that I want to address is what sewing machine should you buy? And I can't tell you what to buy. You have your own budget, you have your own preferences and your own features that you want or that are important to you, just like I do. So what I will do is within the post linked below, I will list out what machines I have on this table as well as other machines that I have owned or personally used that I liked. And you know, that's a starting place for you. If um, you know, you're looking at a machine that's not on my list, that doesn't mean it's a bad machine. I would just seek out you know, other user reviews on that particular model. And if at all possible, see if you can go play with that machine before you purchase it for yourself. So that is my recommendation on sewing machines.